Hi, and welcome again to another episode of McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy, and today I'm going to be taking you through how to do a four-point moving average, as well as a centered four-point moving average. I'm assuming, before you watch this video, that you know how to do a three-point and a five-point moving average, so we're focusing today on just the even numbers. This is all part of Queensland's Unit 3 curriculum for Senior Maths, Year 12. Um, however, if you are doing it in another strand of maths, this will also be helpful for you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me at mcclutchymaths at yahoo.com. Let's get started. I have a data set here that I prepared earlier. As you can see, it's got 10 weeks of data and sales. We want to be able to calculate the four point moving average for the 10 weeks of sales. Now today I'm going to be doing this in Microsoft Excel just to save a bit of time for you and me. However, you should also do a sample calculation if you're doing an exam or an assignment to demonstrate that you know how to do this by hand. And I'll show you what that would look like. So on this next sheet over here, I'm showing the formula first, then I'm substituting in the values into the formula, I'm doing my next step of calculations, and then I give a final answer. You notice that I've used Y with the bar on top for the mean, not X with the bar on the top. And the reason for that is that we're always in time series using the sales data from the Y axis or our dependent variable. We're going to be, sorry, yeah, dependent variable. We're going to be using that for the formula, not the X value. So let's go back and have a look at how to do this. So we know when we calculate an average, we add the numbers up and we divide them by how many numbers that there are. With a four point moving average, well, we've done threes and five points and we basically have found a middle number and we've placed the data under the middle number. But with a four point moving average, there's no middle as such. The middle will be somewhere between two and three. So what we need to do is leave gaps after each of our data points so that we can fill those in. So I've prepared some gaps earlier. Let's unhide those columns and get started. So you can see now I've got gaps after number two, three, four, five, etc. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is find the average of the first four numbers. And I'm going to put that in between the second and the third number. So in Excel, I type equals average, open the brackets, equals sign tells Excel I'm doing a formula. And then I close the brackets and it's going to calculate that for me automatically. I'm going to put my second data point in the next cell where there's a blank column between the three and the four. This time my average is going to be made up of years two, three, four, and five. So I type the formula again and we start from the second data point and so on all the way along. This one will be from the third data point and the next four values. For some reason that's done that again to me and that should be row two, not row three. Okay, so if you get that error message, you've just gone too far down. Okay, I'm not going to go all the way across here just to save some time. That's our four-point moving average, but what about a centered four-point moving average? This is a little bit different. It's an average of an average. So now we're going to take the average of our four-point moving average points. So this time I'm going to type the formula here again, and this first four-point moving average and the second point moving average get averaged and so on, all the way across. So this one is a little bit more tedious because firstly you've got to do the four point moving averages and then the centered four point moving averages. But basically this is a, a way of smoothing that curve even further. I hope this helps and if you've got any questions, once again, don't hesitate to contact me at mcclutchymaths at yahoo.com. Thanks for listening.